Hello, and welcome to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract, and we're working in Lesson 2 now on the Zim site, zimjazz.com. Scroll on down, hit School. We're on Lesson 2, Configuration Objects and Animation. And indeed, check out the earlier videos if you've just arrived and it's the first one you've seen. In lesson two, we took a look at configuration objects so that we could apply these parameters or apply values to the parameters. We looked at uh, the object literals, so literals, object literals, and that's all here on the school site as well. And then about configuration objects, where you have a place to practice those if you want. Configuration uh, for display objects. Here's a rectangle, for instance, and you would type that code in there. The configuration object looks like looks, looks like that. So you would type the code in here and test it out, and you can practice all of these different uh, components or shapes being created with configuration objects. Cool, huh? And then also you can pass in to the various methods. There's configuration objects for the methods as well. When we drag something, do we want it to come up on top? So we may not see all of this stuff in the videos. You can come here and practice them and see more things here at Zim School. Now, we had worked on this lesson the last time where we had a slider. I think we had a new version of that slider. Yeah, that's right. There we go with 0.5 steps. So we're going to take a look at uh, that again in this video and have this slider maybe change the scale of an image. So we want to bring in an image. It's something that we didn't see in the last lesson of our display objects because indeed a bitmap is a type of display object. So why don't we do that? Let's bring in a picture, and then we'll change the scale. We'll do some review of what we were doing with the slider and the configuration object and change the scale of the picture. Sound good? That's the plan. We'll even maybe animate the picture in, and we can start looking at animation. And then perhaps we'll move to one more video after on more advanced things to do with animation, because animation is quite wonderful, and there's many options. All right, I do have a picture in Adam. I can scroll over and roll over on the left-hand side there, and I've opened up an Assets folder right there, and here's the asset we're going to use. Ooh, okay. Looks like it's on white as opposed to a PNG, which is background transparent, so we may have to change the color of our background to be white. Anyway, there's, there's a picture. That's Dr. Abstract. <laughs> oh, that's me. I wish that were my car. And this is Antonio did the drawing of this. He's the one that did Dr. Abstract there as well. A shout out to Sheridan Animator. And uh, here we go. All right. So back into lesson two here. Whoop. We're going to need to bring in that asset. And Zim's got a way to do that up in the frame. There's a couple ways. But uh, in the frame call, we're passing in scaling, width, height, color, outer color. The next two parameters deal with assets. So we can put them here and then add them to the next two parameters. Const assets is equal to, if you only have one asset, you're welcome to just put the name of it, car.p.jpg. Uh, like so. If you have more than one asset, then you would put it in what's called an array. An array looks like the square brackets, and then you put comma and your other assets. But we haven't seen an array yet. We only have one asset, so I <laughs> guess we'll just leave it like that as a string. Next, we would put the path that that is. And this is optional, but it makes sense, uh, as I'll explain in just a second. The path to the asset. Path is equal to assets slash. So slash means a folder. And here's the assets folder, and the car is in the assets folder. Here's where lesson two is. And so we have to go into the assets folder first. Do not put a slash at the beginning. That means go way back to the root of your server, wherever that is. That's in this case on my desktop is my, my D drive or something. So it's a relative URL to assets, that's called. Now these two things don't do anything. Uh, they just store these in, in constants. We need to pass these in to the frame here. So here's the frame. And now we say assets, comma, path. 
like so. And now the frame will load those and then when it's ready, when all the assets are also loaded, it will run. That's a bit of an issue if you have a lot of assets, then you're, you're there waiting. One of the things you can do is pass in a waiter, comma, new waiter, uh, or a progress bar, new progress bar. Either of these will help. That will show a little uh, waiter that you can customize with colors. You would customize it by using the parameters here. And by the way, you could store that in a const as well up here and pass it in. I've just quickly thrown it in there because we're not going to use it. Uh, that's one option. If you have uh, assets, at least you can show them something that we're waiting for those assets, a loading type little message thing. Uh, the other way is to go right into the frame and actually put things in here. Uh, that could be even a, an intro page. Meanwhile, you can then frame.load assets here and load assets in afterwards. And as indeed, you can load assets in any time you need them. And that way, people don't wait for those assets to load. That's uh, really cool, huh? So that's called preloading to some degree. And CreateJS helped us with that, the preload.js. Uh, Zim is built on CreateJS. CreateJS has that good way of preloading. We've made it a little easy. They have a manifest and all that kind of stuff. We uh, hopefully have made it a little bit easier, a convenience in, in Zim. And that's what uh, we're all about here. It's him just making things a little bit easier for you guys. At the same time, though, just recall, we are totally using JavaScript this whole time. Uh, we were definitely going through the JavaScript basics. It's just we're seeing it rather than on the DOM, the document object model with HTML tags, we're seeing it on the BOM, the bitmap object model with CreateJS and Zim that um, shows things in a slightly different way than HTML tags but we're still using as much JavaScript as they are. <laughs> All right, so uh, can you tell that's a bit of a sore point with me? <laughs> it's still JavaScript. <laughs> All right, uh, now, once we load that in, uh, once that gets loaded in, how do we see it? Well, we have to wait until it gets loaded in, and then we can add it. We may as well add it just above the ticker here, perhaps right here. All right, so that would be frame.asset, like that. So we use a method. This is a method if it has the round brackets. See, pure JavaScript method uh, of an object, the frame object. And we would then pass in the name of it, car.jpg, like that. What this represents now, the, what this method does, is it goes and gets that car from the assets of the frame, from whatever has been loaded into the frame, it goes and gets that, and it is a bitmap now. So this is called a bitmap class, or a bitmap object, made from a bitmap class. So there it is, if we want to see it, dot center, we can center it on the stage like so, and that will be a bitmap then that is centered on the stage. If you want, if we want to deal with it later, for instance, we will, when we do the slider, we'll want to change change it there, then we should store it in a variable or in a const. Const is equal to, uh, should we call it car, or pick maybe, pick, oh, sorry, const pick. <laughs> See, we're learning JavaScript. <laughs> the the name of the, the keyword, const, and then the identifier, pick, followed by the assignment operator, and then the object that is being uh, that has the center chained on. Center, by the way, returns the object, so all of this gets um, assigned in there properly. So const pick is equal to our new car. Do you want to call it car? Uh, I may as well call it car since it is a car. Const car equals that asset. Well, let's see what that looks like. You're probably dying to see the car, aren't you? You're going, oh, I want to see the car. And we refresh. And there indeed is the car. Don't know if you can tell, but there's the slider sitting on the car. We might want to move that slider down a bit, huh? I don't know. It's up to you about, I, I would say it'd be nice to just increase the size of the car rather than, well, let's, we can see the whole picture. The whole picture right now you can see is a big rectangle. It's white where the background, there's the background right there is, is gray. So it'd be handy to change the background to gray or <laughs> background to white so that, uh, you know, you can't even tell that there's a box around the car. Normally uh, a PNG would be better to use there. All right, so 
great. We have a car for now and we're scaling. We'll leave it as a big white box and that can show us uh, what we're actually scaling there. And then down in here where we know what the value is of the slider, the slider is going from zero. Remember that was a default min is already zero. Min colon zero comma. So that's fine. We can put it in there too if we want to make sure that we know what these things are. We want to then apply that value to the scale of the car. So where would we do that? Well, don't do it out here. I mean, actually, we might have to do it out here too because you're going to see that if we don't have it the same scale to start, then it's going to jump. But let's see that jump and then we can fix it. Uh, I think we'll see a jump. Uh, yeah, well, it's going to sit there. Then we're going to use the slider and the slider starting at 2. Yes, we are going to see a jump. So we don't do it out here. If we want to change the scale of the, the car when we change the slider, we would do it right inside here when we can see that those values are changing. As the slider changes, we set the scale of the car. So that's a property. Uh, it is a property. Car dot scale x is a property. That's how much it scales in the x. And we could say that's equal to the slider dot current value. But do you remember another way to do this? In this case, it, it doesn't matter as much. Well, this is only changing the x, so we would also have to change the y, so that's a bit annoying. It was so annoying that finally CreateJS gave us a scale, car.scale. This is a convenience property that will scale both those things. So uh, that would do it. But for a long time, and also all back in flash days, we would have to <laughs> do both the scale x and the scale y, which, like I said, was annoying. Uh, this would work, kind of. It almost works. We've made a change, so to see that change, we'd have to stage.update. Now that's true and not true. Turns out that the slider itself is updating the stage because as we move the slider, it, it, we need to see that the button is changing. Get it? So you don't quite need the stage.update. However, it may actually be one little tick behind. <laughs> So the button updates, and then it calls the slider saying that the change has happened. Then you might still have to do an update after that. I can't remember. I think we fixed that in behind, so we don't have to. There's also another thing. Uh, by the way, those are two stage.updates. The button is updating the stage, and we're updating the stage here. What we did is uh, created an overall Zim constant called optimize with uppercase optimize and if you set that to true then the buttons themselves don't update the stage and that really really optimizes on mobile it means you don't have like a, two uh, updates happening at the same time each time anyway whatever on certain it probably won't be noticeable that was like extreme optimization shall we try it car dot scale equals this. Now this is the what, what I might call the old-fashioned way where we're using a property to change this. We've gone to chainable methods, so let's try this out. We refresh here. There it is. We, we didn't move the slider, but watch what happens as I adjust the slider here. Boom. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. There's a zero. There's a 0.5. Here's a, a 1. So this is how it loads in at a scale of 1. Refresh. But we started the slider at a scale of 2. So as soon as I move the slider, bop, it, it sort of does that. Anyway, uh, we can fix that in a couple ways. Uh, first of all, when we change the scale, now that I see it, I don't really like having it go bump, 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 bump. I would rather we not do steps. So one of the nice things about the slider when you when you break it down the configuration object onto multiple lines here is that you can comment out things quite easy and bring them back. See that? If they were all in a big long line, that would be harder to do. Well, impossible. So we drop them down onto multiple lines and we can comment them out and bring them back if we need to. Now did you note that? I, I selected both lines just as long as you're on both lines and then uh, comment like that. By the way, that also works uh, selecting both. We can shift tab and tab. So you can tab whole blocks of things 
and comment whole blocks of things by just selecting them in Atom and then doing the hotkey. Control slash is the hotkey for commenting. All right, so now we're back to uh, not having those ticks. And, and let's move that slider down as well. We've centered it, but let's put it sort of down at the bottom. There's a way to get it to the bottom. We could leave the center in there and go dot pose. And at that point, we'd want to try and avoid any positioning in the X, because all we want to do is move it in the Y down. And this is how we used to have to do it a few zims back, a few minor versions ago. Uh, but then we introduced these constants to pose. So we can do this all with pose now, because when we introduced the constants, we also provided a constant called center. So we no longer need to do a two-step maneuver to, to center and position. We can do it all with pose, like so. We would say zero for uh, what, how much we want to change the position in the X from the center, and then something like, oh, I don't know, 50 that will change the, uh, will we'll position it from the bottom. So we just have to remember zero is from the center, comma, and 50 is from the bottom, like so. And that should now center it in the X and put it on the bottom in the Y. So we save that up and refresh here. There it is, centered in the X and positioned at 50 from the bottom. Super. Now we still have this issue. Watch. It's going to, as, as soon as I touch this or move it, drag it, it's going to change the scale of the car a lot. Boop. All of a sudden, the scar, the, the scars, the car's scale changes. Do you see something else about the scale that's a bit of an issue? Do you see how the smoother scale is nicer, isn't it? Do you see the issue? Where are we scaling about? Do you remember? We're scaling about the top left corner of the car because the registration point of a bitmap is in the top left corner by default. So a bitmap comes in as a sort of like this rectangular thing. And um, therefore, its, it's uh, registration point is at the top left corner. So instead of centering, do you remember what we would do? Center reg. Anytime we want to animate or spin something around the center or scale it from the center, then we probably will want to center reg instead of just center. So we refresh here. There it is, and we've still got this jump, but at least now the car is scaling from the center of it. How do we fix the jump? Well, it just means that the slider and the scale of the car need to start off at the same thing. Right now, the slider is being set to 2, but the scale of the car is just 1. So we would set the current value of the slider to 1. Now we can't leave it like this. Same problem. If we don't put anything, then what is the slider starting off as? The slider starting at 0. Which will be how it is. So let's and we'll see that jump again. So slider starting at zero, car starting at one. As soon as we touch the slider, or not touch it, but drag it, here we go. Boop. It goes to just above zero and then comes in. So that's not good. We basically want to make sure that we start the slider at one. Because the that that's the car's scale. Unless, of course, we scale the car. So we could have started off with the car, scaled to whatever we want. We would go dot scale here. Oh, that reminds me. We have to get back to this car dot scale issue. So let's save that up, though, and make sure that this is going. We refresh here. Car's at 1. Hey, look at the slider. Slider's at 1. Now, as soon as we move it, it it's hooked up there properly. It's connected properly. All right, uh, another thing we wanted to do is set the background to white so that we don't see the rectangle there happening. Although, you know, like I said, that was handy to demonstrate if that was the, the full bitmap there. So that would be up here. Instead of a color of light, we would put white. I think it's white, the background, background anyway. Hopefully it is. appears that way. So there, wow, look at that. It's a car that's scaling. Ooh. 
And the next thing is just adjust that scale. So uh, we have introduced dot ska, so car dot ska would probably be how you would do that now. And the slider dot current value would go tuck right in there. It, it's up to you. You could, Because we're, we don't really need to chain anything else on here, there's no real reason that we have to use a method. We could drop back to a scale, but the I suppose for consistency, if when we do chain and want to change, say the scale here, we could just go dot sky. You see how that's easy enough. We we just chain that on. Since we're chaining most of the time, when whenever even if we don't really need to chain, we may as well still use the same method and almost forget about these things. Uh, you might need to use those things if you're wanting to ask what the scale of the car is. What is the scale of the car? Then you could say, well, zog car dot scale x, etc. All right, so there we go. Uh, we have a car that is scaling, as far as I know. Let's see if that still works. Save that. Refresh here. Yeah, seems to be. Hoot, hoot, hoot. You like that? All right, what other, like this is the default slider. It doesn't look too bad, but what if we wanted to make a slider that was say, I don't know, round like the headlight or something and blue. We could even put a headlight image on there, but let's make a blue circle just to remind us of how we would do that. That's in, when we make the slider, if we take a look, ah, there's a button. That That's the button part, so. Yeah. For the button, we would say comma button, like that, colon. So remember, it's the name of the property or name of the parameter first. This is an object literal, it's called, remember? And these things are properties of the object literal, but these property names need to match the parameter names that are in the doc. The order doesn't matter, but the name does. So button, uh, new button. And, well, as a matter of fact, it's kind of funny. We we used the object literal so that we get could get to the use ticks later on, but now we're not even using the ticks. So really, these are the, the first three parameters. Min, oh no, step. So we're avoiding step. We'd have to say step colon zero, or sorry. We would have, if we were doing just the parameters here, I'm trying to get at is uh, we're doing this route right here. It would be zero, three, we would have to say zero, then we could put the button in round brackets. So we're almost, and that might be, be shorter than doing it this way. And you get to choose, like I said, you know, whichever way is most convenient for you, that's fine. So button is a new button. Now the new button looks like this by default. It's gonna look pretty silly, refresh. There it is. <laughs> it says press. <laughs> so that's a default button, and we've just put that onto the slider. <laughs> so, like I said, kind of silly. Uh, so that means inside of the button itself, we're going to have to put in some parameters. Now, the button has a default width and height. So the parameters for a button are width, height, label. And we don't actually want a label for the slider. I mean, you could have one if you wanted to, but I don't think we want one. We just want to turn that button to be round. And the way we can do that is set a width and a height that is a square, and then set the corner of the button to be round. But the corner is a long way along the button. Do you want to see it? So here's Zim, we'll go to the docs, type in button in the search. And width, height, label, background color, roll background color, all these colors first. Uh, we might be interested in that though. We got to get to background color and roll background color. We may want to use both those things. And where the heck is corner? I uh, can't even see it here. I know it's here somewhere. <laughs> it is. Do you see it? Roll background, icon, color, button, uh, button, corner, corner, vertical line. Oh my goodness, what, what's going on with me? Maybe, maybe I can see it down here. Uh, there it is right there after border width. So uh, is it in here? Border width, corner, there it is right in the middle. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Losing it. So 
luckily I know it's called corner. I don't really have to, to, to know how many things to get to because I'm going to use the, the Zim Duo technique to specify it like so. We put in the squiggly brackets, right? Uh, we'll call this a bit of a review. Uh, yeah. Okay, we put in the squiggly brackets there, like so. We can drop it down if we want right away. And uh, the width and the height, we can go something like, I don't know, what do we want? Width of 40, maybe? Comma, height of 40. Comma, and right away we can go to corner. Corner, colon, half of that, 20. And that will end up making us a circle. There's going to be a bit of an issue. Do you want to see the issue? Do you know what it's going to be? Refresh here. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it still has the word press there that doesn't fit on that side. So still has the word press. I think that's looking a little bit small, maybe. So why don't we go to 60? 60 might be a little bit big, but 30. And we don't want to specify a label, comma, label, colon, quote, quote. So nothing for the label. That's the trick. So it's a little bit of a, not a kludge, but you know, there, there we are. There's a rounded button, which is too big now. Darn. And it looks like we're going to 50. So I hold down the control key and then select both those things, 50, but we don't want a corner of 30 anymore, rather 25. And we want a background color, background color. The color is now a label. So for all these components, we uh, may the, the color be the color of the label and the background color be the background color of the component. On Zim shapes like circle, triangle, rectangle, blob, those kinds of things, the color is the color of the shape. There's no background color. I hope you don't mind. All right, background color, blue, comma, roll. This is a long one, background color, bit of the pain, yeah, pink, for instance, comma. So don't forget those commas. That's a common, common error, not <laughs> to forget the commas. Don't forget those commas on there. And this is the object literal format. The, between the squiggly brackets, we have a property name and its value. Property name value with commas in between and semi or sorry colons in between the two. Nice, huh? It's just a format to store uh, a value associated with a label of some sort. Very, very popular in, in all programming languages. There's a structure to do this. In non-object-oriented programming languages, it might have still been called an array. It could have been an associative array. For instance, PHP is a functional-based language to start. It does have object-oriented now, but uh, functionally, um, it, it would be an, um, an array that's called an associative array because it associates 50 with width and associates another thing is, is called a hash or um, it's sort of like a, ch a, a, a pound sign, you know, or what do we call it these days? Is that a pound sign? What do we call when we hashtag? Oh, yeah, you call it a hashtag. Sort of like a grid. It's a, a, a name and a value, name, value, name, value, that kind of thing. Uh, here, it's a format of an object literal, so we call it an object literal. And there we go. All right. Now, there's something I forgot to show you about that object literal, and we are the basics, and now that I've thought of it, I may as well show it to you. Is that okay? Roop. Up we go. It was back here when we accessed it via the property right there, the dot. By the way, you can change that too. You could say person.hair equals, so like this, uh, shall we do it first? Person.hair equals, quote, uh, red there redhead now like that so you can assign that way oh I don't know if I want to show you that I mean it's close the other way that you can do it is like this person square brackets quote hair <clears throat> so just keep this in mind for later equals um, uh, brown brown there you go simple this is another way to access that same property, but it uses uh, what's called the array access operator, and you could put a string in there. Uh, we'll put that in there. You know, maybe you don't need to know that now, but heck, uh, why not? A little bit of extra. And once again, uh, this sort of harkens back to the fact that 
Uh, remember how I mentioned in other languages, we've got we could use uh, an associative array. This is the array access operator, and there you're accessing it via a string of of the property name. So other languages had this. When JavaScript made their language, they uh, left this in here as well, and it can can be handy. All right, whatever. Down below we go. Down below. We should now have a blue slider that hopefully is the right size down here. Refresh, not bad. It's kind of the wrong color blue though, isn't it? And there's the rollover color. You don't have to have that if you don't want to, but uh, there we there we have it. Yeah, it is the wrong blue. It's probably more like a, the blue or quoted blue, like so. So that's an HTML blue. Uh, I don't know. It might be too dark or too plain looking. Oh, it's too, too. Ch it's like child blocks or something. It's the color of children's playgrounds. <laughs> uh, we could set. How about we try? I think it might look kind of ugly. Uh, a gradient on that. Uh, the gradient is. It's not a parameter, so you can set a gradient. The gradient is not done through the parameters because there's just so many parameters for the gradient. We just decided not to do it that way. Or the button itself. Yeah, I think the button just, um, yeah, it applies, it applies, yeah, right. We can put a gradient on a button. It's a rectangle itself that we have to use a property. So gradient. How about, there's also gloss. I don't know what a gloss looks like. <laughs> so it's been a while that a gloss looks like on a round button. I haven't tried it. A gloss. How about a gloss? Of and I wonder what do we do again there? Point three or something? I think it's a just a number between zero and one, and uh, that gives us interesting. That gives us that. Uh, but note that it's um, <laughs> it's kind of like right on the line. I don't know if that looks good or not. It might have looked nice gloss the other way. Can we just rotate the button? Dot rotate for uh, and rotate it ninety. And so and hope we refresh here and there she be a glossed rotated yeah actually that's sort of suits a bit better doesn't it yeah i like it there we go okay uh, maybe not the pink though red might look nicer because there's a bit of red in there why don't we drop that to zim red and see how that looks yeah Ooh. yeah Okay, good. Now, uh, we're getting on there in time. I did mention that uh, we want to animate this picture in and thought we maybe could get to it in this video, but hey, it seems like a good break and that uh, we can entice you when we come back in the next video. We are going to do some animation. We're going to animate that uh, the picture in. Perhaps we can animate its alpha in, and then also talk more uh, about uh, different animations. All right, this is Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. Hopefully you're doing all right. I don't know how all right you're going to be doing after seeing this. <laughs>